is forever, forever worship you. can only
Well, good morning and welcome to Buckeye First Assembly. Would you stand with me? And can we do exactly what the, the video just said? Can we take a moment to rejoice in the Lord? Would you do that with me? Father, we just love you. We rejoice in you today, God. We give you the highest praise. Lord, we just love you. We love you. Lord, have your way today. Have your way. Flow in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone said amen. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind away? It was my turn Till I met you I was beating but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that day out of the darkness into your glorious day You called my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all I know We all made you Jesus when I made you Oh, you called my name You called my name, I went out of that grave. Of the darkness to your glorious day. Yeah. Lord, we give you the highest praise today, Lord. Lord, call our name today, amen. And give us a heart to respond, Lord. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy. My chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was a no event. But you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open And when you call my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness into your glorious day You call my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Come on and give the Lord a shout of praise. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Because I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. My 
chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Your love is the end that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. And when you call my name, I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness to your glorious day. You called my name. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. <laughs> I love that passage because it's talking about Lazarus. And I've said this before here, and I don't mean to be redundant, but... But, you know, Jesus had to be specific on who he called out of that grave that day. He, he said, Lazarus, come forth. If he had just said, come forth, who knows what am I, who might have came out of that grave. Amen? Amen. He's here today to meet your need, to encourage you today. Amen. Let's continue to praise and worship him. Glorious. Shout it out in glory. Make it louder. Jesus, we shout your name. Jesus, we make your praise. Glorious. You are glorious. Shout it out, 
something with me right now would you just bow your heads and let's pray father this day belongs to you it's devoted to you it's all about you Jesus help us each to lay aside all of our distractions and worries and fear of the unknown and simply come to the well and drink from the living water today. Let us drink deep from the well of salvation like Isaiah 12, 3 speaks of. We drink deep, Lord. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for rescuing us. Thank you. Thank you so much for healing our bodies and for giving us the emotional healing that we need. Everything we need we find in you. So praise your name forever and ever. All glory belongs to you. You are the high and exalted one. You are anointed and empowered. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Join with me. Let's worship him the way he deserves. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, you can be seated for just a moment. And uh, I'm going to take a, a few more minutes than I normally do during this segment. So... Um, first, I just want to say, if you are here with us as a guest, and I met some guests just this morning, we're thrilled to have guests with us almost every Sunday. And let me just tell you that our vision is to find purpose in Christ and share. That's what we're all about. Our purpose, our identity, um, our resolve, our reason for existence, I could go on. It's all, it's all connected to Christ Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And so if you happen to come in and you're wondering, hey, what is this church all about? We're about getting people connected to Jesus. And then we share the journey. And so um, if you are new with us, there's a way that you can get connected immediately. A lot of you are tech savvy. Just text the word connect to this phone number, 602-833-0075. When you text the word connect to that phone number, Immediately, you start receiving 
uh, correspondence from us. We're not going to flood you. We're not going to spam you to death. We won't show up unannounced. None of that stuff. Um, but, <coughs> um, but we do, we really think it's important to get connected. And, and we just want you to know we're glad you're here with us today. Can we give a warm welcome to our guest? God bless you. And um, we're going to receive our offering right now, and I want to just share with you that something that Stephanie and I do, and many of you do it as well, you know, we've set up this recurring giving on the tithes, and it just, it comes out, we don't even have to think about it. Um, I like that. I like thinking less. I don't know about you, Um, because if I have one more thing to remember, right, Um, but it just bam, it just goes. And here's what I've found out about that is that it frees me up then to be able to ask the Lord, are there any other things that you would like me to participate in giving in areas of missions or projects around the church or some of the ministries that we support? And this morning, we're going to receive our regular tithes and offerings, but you're also going to get the chance to give in another way, and you'll learn about that in just a few moments. But I would just like to encourage you that if you would right now, if you haven't done it, go ahead. You can give online. Uh, Just go to bfachurch.org, or you can go on the BFA app, Buckeye First Assembly. If you struggle to find that in your app store, just go on the website, scroll down and click, and you can load the app And it has a lot of wonderful material in there for you. All of it is just resources to help you. And there's a way that you can give. Just click on give. And first time you do it, there's a little bit of labor intensive setting it up. But you can even set it up so you don't have to worry about it. And you can do it in a recurring way. And many of you do that. And and I just appreciate you doing it so much. If you would rather not give digitally, there's a black box right back there in the center of the back of the room. Uh, You can put your check in there or folding money. It's locked. It's safe and secure. And um, you can also put a a connect card when you came in this morning. If you don't want to text the word connect, if that's just not you, you can fill this card out, put it in that black box back there. It does the same thing. And we're just thrilled to have you with us today. I want to recognize a few people this morning. Um, I want to say... Thank you to our ladies who did an incredible yard sale yesterday. I mean, people from all over the surrounding area were just out perusing through and finding that one thing that they couldn't live without, you know, and and it was a lot of hard work. And we had the A-team. I know there were at least, I counted at least six ladies, maybe more, and then several big, burly, strong men moving stuff, and, and you guys are amazing. If you helped Paulette out yesterday, our, ministry, our women's ministries leader, if you were part of that, would you just stand for a moment? We want to say thank you for all your hard work. Could you just give a big thank you to these ones? God bless you guys so much. Appreciate you so, so much. Along those lines, ladies, you're invited to a Mother's Day tea This is hot off the press. It's Saturday before Mother's Day, and that's on May 8th. So not next Saturday, but the one after that, uh, Mother's Day Tea, and it's from noon to 2 p.m. Our own Pastor Dale Workman is going to be ministering that day, and uh, you have to RSVP by May 1st. There's flyers out there. Uh, It didn't make it to the announcements reel this time, but it will be up there next time. If you have any questions, just see one of the people that was just standing and and they can point you uh, in the right direction. Um, I wanted to mention something. Uh, Pete Silheimer is not here today, but I'm afraid I'll forget because there's so many things that come through. Pete has to work the outage, but uh, Sharon, thank you for jumping in on computer today, and you tell him we did this. In fact, next time he's here, maybe we will just do a public recognition, but this is a, um, a letter from our National Royal Rangers director from our headquarters in Springfield, and it's written to me to notify me that officially Pete Silheimer is appointed to serve 
as the FCF representative in the Southwest region. This is not a new thing. He's done it for a number of years, and I don't know how many years, but it's been several years. And that means not just Arizona, but New Mexico, Colorado, California, uh, Nevada. He, he pours into young men. And so those of you that know, our Royal Rangers program is just a great, great blessing. So next time you see Pete Silheimer, tell him a big thank you. And uh, Sharon, don't let me forget, I've got this. I want to get it in his hands. And uh, I just thought, man, that is incredible. And I wanted to definitely mention it. Uh, we had our network conference this, this last week. That's the annual event where all of the AG ministers come together. And we have worship, workshops, teaching, uh, business sessions, and all kinds of things. I know some of you think all we do is play golf. I know you think that. <laughs> you saw pictures I mean, that's just a little part of it, but I'm telling you, we got some golfers here in this church, and I've got to up my game, but um, I did want to let you know that Lee Metcalf was uh, re-elected as our secretary treasurer, as your secretary treasurer for the state of Arizona. He has served in that post for several years, and he is a great blessing. Um, our church, you ought to know things like this. We don't get to mention it unless it just comes up. But uh, we gave over $30,000 last year to World Missions. You were number 29 out of 298 churches in Arizona. You were number 29. So reach around there and pat yourself on the back. That's awesome. And then I got to tell you this one. I didn't see it coming. They, uh, our, nation, our national, our uh, state youth director, our, our DYD, um, Griffin McGrath, was announcing how youth groups did for raising money for Speed the Light, which is the way our young people support missions. And he said, in class two category, that's our group, number one in the state, Buckeye First Assembly. <laughs> Way to go, Pastor Mo. That is awesome. And so nothing like pressure. All you got to do is re-up next year, but now, now they're, gun they're gunning for you, man. But I was so proud for our youth group. You guys are amazing and keep, keep raising money for our, our missionaries. Well, today is a really, really super special day for our family. Some of you know that it was a year ago today that my father-in-law, Stephanie's dad, Jerry Roberts, went home to be with the Lord. And we are remembering, and honestly, if we're honest about it, shedding a few tears, so many wonderful memories, but not just um, in the sense of grieving, we're also celebrating so much his life. And I mentioned earlier that sometimes there's other opportunities to give that come along, and I, I want to invite my brother-in-law, Pastor Keenan Roberts, to come up. And he's, I've asked him if he would take three to five minutes to share about the brand new Jerry Roberts Memorial Fund and what it represents. And then I'm going to give you a chance to give after he explains. Uh, I think that you will really have a much better picture of what this is all about. Would you welcome Pastor Keenan? God bless you. Pastor Pete. I want you to know I've got my timer so that I don't go over my time right here. But it's just such a blessing to be with uh, all of you here today. And uh, uh, I'm just so very proud of my sister Stephanie and Pastor Keith and uh, the great job that you guys are doing here uh, in Buckeye. Our whole family is so proud of you. But it was amazing 51 uh, weeks ago. Uh, we uh, were right here in this very room, right in the middle of COVID, having uh, my dad's memorial service. It was uh, just 10 of us. Uh, the numbers were limited, and maybe some of you watched uh, that service as we live streamed it. There were several thousand people that joined us in that way. But uh, my mom and dad were, uh, it's awesome for mom to be here. We're, we're our families together supporting one another and celebrating uh, dad's home going. And uh, we've just launched something uh, that we want to let you know about today. We are, uh, we're letting the world really know about it. And that is what Pastor Keith mentioned just a moment ago, uh, the Jerry Roberts Memorial Fund. And 
Uh, if you don't know my parents' story, uh, they pastored for many years, and at about 50 years old, they went into missions, and they moved to uh, Latin America, and they learned Spanish at 50 years old. That is quite a task. Yeah. And uh, over the next three decades, my dad would preach and teach uh, countless thousands of times in Spanish, and their heart really became to reach people uh, reach Spanish-speaking people with the good news of Jesus Christ. And they were incredibly passionate and amazingly yeah. effective in this task, not only in Latin America, but also uh, right here for the last several years here in the state of Arizona as they served as the directors of pastoral care uh, for the uh, Spanish Assemblies of God. Our family has felt for the last several months that there was something very important that we were to do to help continue uh, my dad's legacy, my parents' mm -hmm. passion for reaching Spanish-speaking people. And so we created this uh, Jerry Roberts Memorial Fund uh, to give people the opportunity to partner really with my dad. Even though he's gone, how many, of, how many of you know that the Bible says unless a seed falls to the ground? Mm -hmm. It's a discipleship passage. It mm -hmm. is a multiplication right. passage that when something falls to the uh, ground and dies, even someone's life that has been so dedicated and committed to ministry, it's a chance for others to then begin to run with the baton and to carry that call forward. And our family feels so very, uh, uh, we, we feel such a responsibility to do this in my dad's honor. And so what I'm here to do today is to join with the rest of our family. Uh, and I appreciate Pastor Keith last night. You just said, yeah. would you share about it today? Yeah. Uh, we want to give you the opportunity to, to be a part of helping us carry his mission forward. And that is for you to become a part of the Jerry Roberts Memorial Fund. Two days ago, someone came to me and they said, Pastor, we want to help inspire others to, uh, to get behind the memorial fund. This person said to me and my wife, they said, this is what we're going to do. For the next 12 months, we will commit to match up to $1,000 a month for every, for, if $1,000 comes in in a month, we will match up to $1,000 for a year. If, and, and we're sharing this in my church back home in the Denver area today. We're sharing it with you. We're sharing it on Facebook and on social media, letting people know that literally any gift that you give up to $1,000 a month, it will be doubled. So if you give $50, then it will be doubled. It will become $100. And we're asking people to pray, to prayerfully consider uh, partnering with our family, partnering really in my dad's honor, uh, with this Jerry Roberts Memorial Fund and making a 12-month commitment to, to say, you know what, I'll give $10 a month and we know that the anonymous donor will make it 20 or I'm going to give $100 a month and the anonymous donor will make it $200 a month. We want you to prayerfully consider in my dad's honor to carry on his legacy and his passion to help us bless Spanish-speaking ministries. What would that look like? Well, we might, uh, our, we have a family board that's going to make these funding decisions on, on helping send Spanish young people to youth camp, perhaps, or helping support a Hispanic church plant. These types of projects are what we're going to do, and we would love for you to prayerfully cons uh, consider getting behind it. And everybody said, time's up. <laughs> uh, Pastor Keith, thank you for this opportunity to share today. Um. If you would stay here, I want to invite the family to come and join us. Stephanie, come over, and we want, I want to prepare you. Would you pray sure. in just a moment? But something that's really important for this fund to be successful is we're looking for monthly partners, like Keenan mentioned. His cell number is on the screen right now. You might just want to take your phone out, take a picture of it, even if it's just in case, just in case. Because here's the thing, in just a moment, I'm going to tell you how that you can give a one-time cash offering, and some of you will want to do that, but some of you may wish to give each month for the next 12 months an amount. In fact, I have in my heart that if God really put it on a few other people's hearts, similar to the anonymous donor, 
that this could become a true uh, fund that would that would be an endowment to fund ministries mm -hmm. in an ongoing perpetual way. And so if you want to give monthly for a 12-month commitment, send a text to that amount, introduce yourself, my name is so-and-so, I would like to give to JRMF, the dollar amount, each month. And, and then if you would, you're welcome, you don't necessarily have to do this, but you're also welcome, sometimes people just want their pastor to know. You can tell me or Stephanie if, if you would like to share that information, but you don't have to feel like you must do that. Now, that is only for the monthly commitment, but if you would like to give a one-time cash offering for today, if you go on our giving page, you will see a link that says Jerry Roberts Memorial Fund. Every penny that you give will write one check from this church to New Destiny Christian Center, and every penny goes to helping uh, Spanish ministries. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Because let me, let me tell you something about my father-in-law. He came here and did a missions convention, and uh, this was a few years back. And at the end of the uh, convention, he had poured his heart and soul, blood, sweat, and tears into our church to help ramp up our missions giving. We, we presented him with a check for $400. That's not a, a, a nice honorarium. It's what we were able to do. Now we're able to do a little bit more than that when we invite someone to come and speak. But my father-in-law took that check Put it back in my hands. He said, I want to sow into this ministry. I want to sow into Buckeye First Assembly. That's the kind of man that we're honoring today. So I get emotional when I think about the level of his commitment and what an amazing man he was. So I, I wholeheartedly support it. Pastor, I, I didn't mean to preach, but pray. Would you, would you pray for this? Yeah. Let's bow together, can we? Lord, we just thank you for the blessing that you gave our family and so many others, even this church, the blessing that you gave us in, uh, in Jerry Roberts. And what an inspiration uh, he was. What an inspiration both mom and dad have been to so many of us over the years. And Lord, I just pray that as we bring our loaves and fishes to you, the Lord, you would multiply it. Lord, we know that there are already partners and people, even in this very room, people in other parts of the country that are considering how they can partner, Lord, to help uh, the call to reaching the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, Thank such a large Spanish-speaking population. Lord, we know that people are considering, Lord, saying yes to you and what you're putting on their heart. And I pray that all of us would just do what mm -hmm. you are uh, what you're leading us to do, that we would be obedient, that we would bring our loaves and fishes and put it in your hands so that you could do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond anything that we could ask, think, or imagine, and that it would be for your glory and honor. And we pray these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Yes, yes. Just in case you'd like to learn a little bit more about all of the structure and more details about the Jerry Roberts Memorial Fund, you can visit our church's website at godestiny.org, godestiny.org, and you can click on the Jerry Roberts Memorial Fund. And that doesn't count against my time. <laughs> hey, thanks so much, Pastor Keenan. Let's all stand together, and we're going to sing some more songs of worship. And I, I truly feel God's presence here today. I, I pray that we will all just enter in with all of our hearts.
This is how I find my balance. Oh. And this is how I find my balance. Yes, it is. And this is how I find my balance. With a song and a prayer. And this is how I find my balance. Oh, I sing to you. This is how I find my balance. Come to worship you today, Lord. And this is how I find my balance. Yes, it is, Lord. This is how I find my balance. Oh, one more time. And this is how I find my This is how I find my balance. It may look like it may look like I'm surrounded by I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded by, I'm surrounded by you. the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It may look like I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded by you Cause this is how I find my balance This is how I find my balance This is how I find my balance And this is how I find And this is how I find my balance And this is how I find my balance And this is how I find my balance and this is how I find it may it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you Lord have your way it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you. oh it may it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you Cause this is how I find my balance And this is how I find my balance And this is how I find my balance And this is how I find This is how I find my balance This is how I find my balance And this is how I find my balance and this is how I find it may, it may, yeah, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. Cause this is how I find my balance. This is how I find my balance. And this is how I find my balance. And this is how I find. This is how I find my balance. And this is how I find my balance. And this is how I find my balance. And this is how I find. Nothing, nothing is as strong as your blood. We sing, nothing is as strong as your blood. We sing, nothing is as strong as your blood. Yes, Lord, nothing is as strong. This is how I find my balance. Sing it out. This is how I find my balance. And this is how I find my balance. And this is how I find. And this is how I find my balance. And this is how I find my balance. And this is how I find my balance. 
And this is how I fight And this is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles Yeah This is how I find my battles. This is how I find it may It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you Yes, Lord It may look like I'm surrounded I'm surrounded by you Thank you, Lord It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you Cause this is how I find my battle And this is how I find my battles Yes, this is how I find my battles And this is how I find One more time This is how I find my battles And this is how I find my battles And this is how I find my battles And this is how I find Come on and give the Lord praise today, amen. This is how I find my battles. And this is how I find my battles. And this is how I find my battles. And this is how I find. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. And this is how I find my battles. And this is how I find. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. There is none like you, Lord. There's none like you, Lord. But I'm surrounded by you. Oh, 
It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes, Lord. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Because this is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. And this is how I find my battles. This is how I find. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. And this is how I find. Hey Amen. I wonder if you'll do something with me today. The scripture says to commit your way unto the Lord and your plans shall succeed or they will be successful. And that word commit, uh, when you break it down, it literally means to roll it over. like Just like if you had a ball in your hand, you roll it over to the Lord. You roll your way over to the Lord. You commit your way over to the Lord. You're saying, Lord, it's out of my hands. It's in your hands, Lord. I'm trusting you. God, I trust you. The circumstance may not look good, but I'm reminded as I sing this song, it may look like I'm surrounded by whatever, but Lord, truly, I'm surrounded by you. And so today, Lord, I trust you, and I commit my way to you. I roll it over to you. So would you do that tonight, uh, today, if you... If you, if you would just join me in that, would you just lift your hands up and just right now, literally just roll it over to God. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, whatever it is that you feel like maybe the enemy has you surrounded in an area, the Lord says, just, just trust me, just roll it over to me. Would you do that with me right now? Lord, we just roll it over to you, God. Lord, I just trust you with this area of my life. Oh, God, I put it into your hands, Lord. I commit it completely to you, Lord. I roll it over to you, Lord. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. Oh, can we sing it just one more time? It may look like, well, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I say, Lord, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, yes. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Cause this is how we fight our battles. And this is how we fight our battles. And this is how we fight our battles. And this is how we fight. And this is how we fight our battles. And this is how we fight our battles. And this is how we fight our battles. And this is how we fight. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight with a song and a prayer. Oh, I cast my care on you, Lord. With a song and a prayer. Lord, I cast my care on you. I'm reminded today, you said in your word, cast your cares upon me, for the Lord cares for you. Oh, this is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. And this is how I find my battles. And this is how I find. Oh, this is how I find. My battles, and this is how I find my battles, and this is how I find my battles, and this is how I
Hey, before you sit down, move around and, and smile and be friendly. Do that elbow bump thing that you do in the air high five. And just greet somebody, especially if you see somebody that you haven't met yet. Tell them you're glad to see them this morning. Lord bless you. Thank you for leading us forth from heaven, buddy. Amen. So well, thank you, uh, Pastor Mo and the team for leading us in worship making it easy just to come into God's presence, right? If you are three, four, five-year-olds, uh, those guys are headed upstairs to meet uh, for Little People's Church, and you're welcome to take advantage of that. First through sixth grade, man, they're just going full throttle back there already. And so my wife right there, who, by the way, sweetie, just hang on just a second. I wanted to point out, 
She is wearing one of her dad's shirts this morning in honor of him, and, and, uh, but she's going up with Little People's Church, so let's give a big hand to the three, four, and five-year-olds. <laughs> well, Water That Lives, over these four weeks, you are invited to wash in the waters of renewal and refreshing. We are really focusing on a teaching time that especially looks at a theme that happens in St. John's Gospel where he, ta- where he talks about water. He teaches about water. And so water that lives is intended to elevate your faith level, bubbling up with joy, teeming with life, brimming over with excitement because of what Jesus does deep inside of us. How many of you have sampled the living water? I'm just curious, yeah? You know what I'm talking about. It's so refreshing and it's so uplifting. Um, Don't forget we conclude this series next week with water baptism. Right out front, under the porch in the entryway, we will be baptizing people in water at the end of the service. If you need to be baptized in water, please see me right away. If you, um, if you have just recently come to Christ, you know we've had 14 individuals accept Jesus as Savior since January 1. And um, if that's you, and some of those are uh, recommitments or... Uh, maybe it's a first-time commitment, but if, if that's you, then talk to me. It may be that you need to be baptized in water, and we, we would love to end this, this campaign by baptizing you in water uh, next Sunday. But the seasoned soul and the recent saint, we can all be inspired by the living water. It was October of 1807, and Meriwether Lewis and William Clark were leading an expedition. They had been sent by the president, Thomas Jefferson, to find a way to get to the West Coast. Um, They were convinced, and not just Jefferson, but many people were convinced, if you just could find the headwaters of the Missouri River, man, you could just drop your canoe in the water and and sail downhill, and it would take you all the way to uh, the Pacific Ocean. But you may know the story, it didn't happen like they planned it at all. When, when they got to the top of Lehigh Pass, which is, which is in modern day Idaho, they discovered this thing called the Rocky Mountains, <laughs> as far as the eye could see. So they had to change their game plan. They thought, we're just going to drop canoes in the water and float downhill. They had to become mountain climbers, but they pressed on. And there was this one point in the journey where Meriwether Lewis, he was losing people off of the team. They were dying from dysentery, from strange ailments. They discovered it was in the drinking water. They had a real problem on their hands. They didn't know what to do. But Lewis and Clark, they're they're both of them geniuses. And Meriwether Lewis, one day it occurs to him what they need to do. And he yells out to the rest of the team, Dip deep water! He yells it out across the water of the cascading river. Dip deep water! Here, watch me. And he plunges his bucket down into the river. Let it go way down deep. And he pulls it back up. Get the deep water. The deep water is clean. The deep water won't have any disease. Dip deep water. And that's, that was a very important discovery for them. And it, I think it's a very important discovery for us. Dip into the deep water. Sample the living water. And when that happens, I promise you, you'll never be the same again. So, in our spiritual lives, 
uh, many of our afflictions, our trials, our infirmities, all of it will be lessened, be eased up on if we come to the living water. You know, the last two Sundays, I talked about uh, John chapter 4 and John chapter 7. These are places where the scripture literally uses the phrase living water. Today, we go back to the beginning of the book for another water story. And next week, next week, we'll go to the end of the book for another water story. And incidentally, next week, going to sample a few verses in between the beginning and the end and really to help us understand that what this is all about is for us to experience new life. It just falls perfectly in our calendar because we are post-Easter and we're coming up to Pentecost Sunday. We are going to pray for every person to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We want everyone to experience the power, I should say it this way, the empowering of the Holy Spirit. You'll be hearing more about a special thrust that we're going to have on Wednesday evenings. Pastor Dale will be leading a prayer gathering Prayer for power. And I'm serious that God's going to give us power. So um, so we're we're going to be transitioning that direction. So this morning, uh, today, the sermon is titled, The God Formula. I promised you last week that I would give you the God formula today. I've often said that you can never figure out God. You can never figure out a formula to explain God. He refuses to be um, put in any form of an equation. And uh, he refuses any kind of step-by-step method that says this is how God operates always and under all circumstances. I've always said you can't put God to a formula, but... Your little old pastor finally figured it out. And I'm going to share it with you this morning, the God formula. By the way, you can trust me because I got an A in trigonometry. (laughs) I really, truly did get an A in trigonometry. If you haven't heard the story, let me tell you what that was like. For some reason, yours truly landed in trig my senior year. I was lost as a goose. I didn't know one thing. I couldn't tell you my cosine from my sine or my tangent from a cotangent. I didn't know what any of it meant. But there was this one genius kid in the class named Jan. It was a boy named Jan. That was his name. And he was brilliant. And so every day the teacher would come in and he would take the textbook. He'd look at the book. He'd look up on the board. He'd look back at the book, look at the board look at the book, then he would say, Jan, do you understand this? And Jan would say, yeah, I understand it. Okay, Jan, go to the board and write it out. All the rest of you copy down what Jan does. I got an A plus in trig. So you can can definitely trust me uh, when it comes to formulas. (laughs) Jesus had a very busy stretch of several days in a row, lengthy, long journeys, exhausting travel. Jesus made the decision to go back to Galilee. And a lot of people wonder, well, why why did he do that? Why did Jesus go back to Galilee? Well, John chapter 2 gives us the answer to this. So first he began by going to Bethany, And I'll I'll try to point Bethany on the east of the Jordan right up there. That's where John the Baptist was baptizing people in water like we're going to do next Sunday. And Jesus went to, um, to Bethany on the east side of the Jordan and he was baptized by John. It was important. It was a coronation. It was like, you know, the beginning of his ministry. Like he was saying, I'm officially starting my public venue now. 
And, uh, and then he went to Galilee. And, but the strange thing is that he needed to get back to Jerusalem. That's really where he was headed. He's trying to get to the, the feast that, in fact, we read about it last week, John chapter 7, the, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, where they lived in huts. And so a lot of people have, have questioned, why? Why would he do that? Now, for you and me, it's about a 30-mile trip. I mean, that's, you know, for us, get in the car, you have, you have to pay a little more for the gas money, right? But it's not that bad. We'll just zip over there. But can you imagine walking and if you had some animals in tow, what would that be like? And so it's a long, arduous journey, and he did all of that in several days. And now we know why, because John chapter 2 tells us there was a miracle that occurred in Cana, the little village of Cana. Um, by the way, miracle is such a misused word in today's culture. Um, you know... Everything's a miracle. We'll call anything a miracle. You know, a miraculous shot at the end of the basketball game. Or just take a trip to the grocery store. You have miracle whip, miracle suds, miracle bandages, a host, all kinds of hosts of miracle gadgets. You, you have um, miracle products that they will give you miracles for your hair, for your complexion, for your grass, for your car, all of it's miraculous. The word no longer means a direct and visible act of God that cannot be explained by science. It now means anything that is amazing or wonderful that can be produced by intelligence. But the Bible says there are miracles that happen. Things that defy logic, things that only God can do. And in fact, there's 35 miracles recorded in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 35 different miracles. The one that we're going to read about this morning is in John's Gospel. John only wrote about seven of them. I mean, it wasn't like he was setting out to tell these stories of all the miracles that Jesus did. He, he only recorded seven miracles. So there must have been something that was special about this miracle. Well, I think that the thing is, it's because it happened among close family friends. This is very early on in his ministry. He's just been baptized. He's just been coronated. Um, it happens in Cana, near his hometown, in Galilee. Probably... Scholars believe that probably it was a family member who got married. And that that would explain why Mary, his mother, assumes authority. Because they had a real problem. They ran out of wine at the wedding. And Mary jumps in and starts taking charge, probably because it was a family member. And that would explain why not only is Jesus there, but his brothers, his, his natural, his half-brothers, they are there too. It was a family event, and um, it was a family affair of close friends. So let's read John chapter 2. You can follow along on the screen or your device or your Bible. The next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so... Jesus' mother told them they have no more wine. The next verse, dear woman, Jesus talking to his mom says, dear woman, um, that's not our problem. <laughs> you, you know, interestingly, the, the NIV, the um, 1984 NIV, it says, dear woman, but the 2011 version that came out, they took the word dear away, and it just says woman. Also, New Living Translation, it says, dear woman. And I, I know why. Um, now, if you look at the original language, the, Greek, the original Greek document, it didn't have the word dear. It just had woman. But they felt the need to supply it because if otherwise, like in English, we might think woman. We might think a real derogatory, no, listen here, woman, but that wasn't it at all. 
it was very common in, the, in their culture to say woman. And so they, they said, dear woman. But I, I'm drawn to this thing about how it's his mom. But he, he doesn't say, no, mom. <laughs> dear woman. Stephanie, I have heard sometimes, and uh, even after three plus decades of ministry, I, I'll be in the lobby and I'll hear her say, well, Pastor Keith, da 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 and she's talking about me, her husband, and there's just this inside me, I kind of go, oh, it's so weird, but you, you just never get used to it. I remember my mother-in-law, this is such a great story. Back in the day when my father-in-law was ordained, they didn't invite the spouses to the front, only the one being ordained. And so here's her husband, Jerry, is up there being ordained. And then they invite the whole crowd to come by and give a greeting, shake hands with him. And so she walks by and shakes hands and congratulates her husband. <laughs> and I do wonder if there's not a little bit of the nuance of mom, but, but rather than that, dear woman, that's not our problem. Jesus replied, my time has not yet come, but his mother told the servants, do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby, there were six stone jars used for Jewish celebration, the ceremonial washing, and each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it out to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions, and when, when the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. And it says this, a host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. Jesus just turned that water to wine. And here's the whole point of this whole story. Verse 11, this miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory. It's a miracle. And he revealed his glory. And look at that next word, the next sentence. And his disciples believed in him. This was quite a moment. So uh, let's begin the God formula. For starters, take the square root of the miraculous. By the way, if you're taking notes, and some of you you'd like to fill in the notes on the sheet for the worship guide. What I'm going to do this morning, there's really three points that, that are numbered that I'm going to bring out for you. But along the way, we're going to tie together this long sentence, okay? And um, those little small italic phrases as you're looking at your worship guide... I'm going to just string them together in between the points until we make one final observation. Take the square root of the miraculous. Here's the first point. A miracle, by definition, is inexplicable. If you can explain him, he ceases to be God. God, by very definition, is miraculous. You cannot put him in a box. You cannot say, this is how God operates. He will tease you every time because he is in the realm of the miraculous. Now, we've been studying on Wednesday nights a video teaching series that I invite you to this Wednesday about how God split the Red Sea right down the middle and made dry ground so that the Israelites could walk across and get to the other side. What we've learned is there's really two camps. There's the Egyptian view and the Hebrew view. And the Egyptian view is purely scientific. It says, well, 
it says there were this many people, but that doesn't make sense. That would be impossible. And it says that they went across this body of water, but that would be impossible. What we would rather say is it was, this word means encampments and uh, patrols of people instead of thousands. And and so we're going to reduce it from 2 million down to 20,000 people, something that we could understand. And they didn't really go across a bay of water. No, it was like a a stream that they went across. And if, if the wind was strong enough, you could see how it would allow them to trot through and get to the other side. There is a Greek word for that. Baloney. It was the in the Hebrew model. It was a miracle. the The whole thing was a miracle. They they walk across dry ground and go through this large body of water with God just splitting the water. They walk right through it. They have shoes that last forty years. There are upwards of 2 million people, 600,000 men plus their wives and children going across this dry wilderness and through the sea first into the wilderness, led by a pillar of fire and, and a cloud of God's presence. The whole thing is intended to say, look, this is an undeniable miracle. There's no other way to say it. It's a miracle. And Jesus does the same thing in Cana of Galilee. Jesus splits the water. He goes down to the molecular level and just says, I know it's H2O, but this is how I did it back then. Water split. Water become wine. And it was. It's a miracle. So you take the square root of the miraculous and you multiply it by impeccable, unpredictable timing. Miraculous, yes, but the timing is really, really important. Multiplied by impeccable, unpredictable timing. And here's the second point this morning. Timing matters to Jesus, but he will make exceptions. Let me tell you what I mean. Uh, Just this last week on Sunday, I I preached from John chapter 7 about the festival of the booths, the festival of the seven days of living in temporary huts, And on the last and greatest day of the feast, which was really day eight, Jesus says, anyone who's thirsty, come to me and drink. And out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But before he did that, he told his brothers, my time has not yet come. And here in John chapter two, he does the same thing. His his mother says, son, they're out of wine. (laughs) They're embarrassed. Jesus says, dear woman, that's none of your business. That's not any of our concern. How many of you have ever told your mom no? How did that go for you? You do what your mama says. You know it's true. And I don't know if she did the finger wag thing. But at no point do we see Jesus more human than in this moment, possibly on the cross. But right here, he's saying, dear woman, (laughs) you're kind of getting the cart ahead of the horse. My time isn't here yet. And she said, nonsense. They're out of wine. And this is embarrassing. Now, yes, you are. You are going to do something. I don't, know how, you're gonna, I don't know what you're going to do, but you're going to do something. And all you guys, you, you just do whatever he tells you to do. And mama got it done. And it's really remarkable. I want you to think about something. This was the first miracle that Jesus performed. The first. How did she know he could do it? How does she know that about him? Well, 
when Jesus was born, in fact, even when he was conceived, an angel appeared to her and spoke to her. And then when he was born, angels were singing the birth celebration announcement. How many of you had that happen when you were born? (laughs) And then when he's 12 years old, he is teaching all the smart people down at the temple. She watched his life, and now she says, you just got baptized. You are now officially ministering. And this is my family. And this is important. And you just got to do, no, uh-uh, don't tell me my time. You got to do something. Do what he says. And it got done. Could there be a sense in which if it were not for parents sometimes? You know, I think, would I be doing what I'm doing if it were not for my godly dad and my godly mom? I want to hope so, but I'm telling you, they helped me along. And I'm not saying Jesus needed help. That's not what I'm saying. But this is a powerful moment. She would not be denied. You will do something. I know you can do something. And not only do we see Mary, the mother of Jesus, pushing him, but also we see Jesus breaking away from his mom. Now it's no longer but mother. Now it's dear woman. And there is this sense in which he's saying, I am your son, but I have a heavenly father. And there's this breaking away that's taking place here, and it's beautiful. Um, You always respect mom and dad, but the time comes to break away. And he's making a statement here at the outset of his ministry. You see, Jesus turns the water into wine to meet Mary's request. He could have just as easily turned the stones into bread like Satan requested. But he will not do it. But for her... He will break protocol. It's not the right timing, but it's right in his heart, and he gives her what she longs for. He's always right on time. He is never late, but he misses plenty of opportunities to be early. Take the square root of the miraculous multiplied by impeccable, unpredictable timing, Factored into the exponent of love to the infinite power. To the infinite power. Verse 11, it said, it revealed the glory of God. That is the whole point of the story. His glory is revealed. Verse 12, the disciples put their faith in him. That is the whole point of this story. I believe him. I put my faith in him. Here's the third point. The greatest love of all time is the love of God. The greatest love of all time. It extends to eternal infinity. It's all about leading us to his love. He wants relationship with each one of us. He's not concerned so much about the past. He's concerned about my heart right now what will I do with this moment when eternity bleeds through and breaks into our temporary how will I deal with this encounter with Jesus Christ um, I, I read a story this last week and I thought I would use it then I thought no nah, I won't use it then I thought oh, I'm going to go ahead I'm going to go ahead and do it but it was the end of the school year and uh, it was, you know, the kindergarten class, they're finishing up and they're, they've got their little paper gowns and paper hats and, and the kindergarten teacher is receiving gifts from her pupils. The florist's son comes and hands her a package and she takes it knowing that mom is the florist and, and she sort of shakes it, she holds it up over her head And she says, I'm just going to take a wild guess. I think these are flowers. (gasps) Yes, they're flowers. How did you know? Oh, I just took a wild guess. 
And then the next one was the son of the chocolatier. He had a nice candy shop on the corner of the street. And, um, and she takes the chocolate, or takes the box and she shakes it, rattles it around, holds it up above her head. And she says, I'm just going to take a wild guess. I'll bet these are chocolates. And, and the little boy says, oh, that's amazing. Yes, they are chocolates. How did you know? I just took a wild guess. And then the last one to come on the scene was, um, it was a little boy whose dad had a, a refreshment stand out on the street corner. And, and I mean, all the kids after school, they would go up to the stand and, you know, get drinks and chips and popcorn and all kinds, had all kinds of wonderful treats. And um, so he hands the box to the teacher and she shakes it a little bit and she lifts it up and she notices that the box is leaking and so she dabs her finger on it and tastes it and she says, I'm just going to take a wild guess. Is this lemonade? And the little boy said, very excited, no, it's a puppy. <laughs> bad pastor, bad pastor. I've heard actual stories of people who, in a, an attempt to actually save their life, Oh, painful to even say it, they drank their own urine. I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to go ahead and die. If, if it gets to that point, it was nice knowing you. I, I know I, they, I, they say that in a, a certain case, you, if you boil it, and, but it's so acidic and all this, but it could save your life, but it actually perpetuates the problem with the salt content and all that. I just, for the life of me, I can't imagine... But if you were really desperate, you might. You might take desperate measures. In life, we're e either running towards our future or running from our past, but rarely are we living in the moment, simply allowing God to mold us and shape us. It's easy to want to run from our problems and our issues and our circumstances. But no matter what happens in life, illness or great health, betrayal of commitments, grief or favor, good times, bad times, success or failure, everything in this life has the power to refine us or weaken us and to give us just a glimpse of what our true heart is is supposed to be. And so, here's the equation. Here's the God formula. Take the square root of the miraculous, multiplied by impeccable, unpredictable timing, add faith, subtract fear, factor by the exponent of love to the infinite power, which I represent by 77 times 7. This is for our advanced Bible math students. Uh, all of this factored over mi uh, mystery, deducing the radius of endless beginnings and deconstructing it all until it brings it to this point, God. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And if you think I've scratched the surface on God with my little formula, you're wrong. I've got nothing. I've got nothing. I can't even begin to describe him. Take all the most brilliant schematics of the brightest mind and the concoctions of genius, the nuances of scholastic prognostication, and, and you know what you can do with it? You can wad it all up and throw it in the trash can, just like a kid that's trying to figure out his homework. Because you will never find a formula on God. But here's the thing about God. If you will simply come to Him and give Him your heart, He will give you a drink of the living water 
and you will never thirst again. Amen. On this day, I'm, I'm thinking about um, stories of my father-in-law, one of my favorites. I want to invite our worship team. You guys go ahead and come up and start making some music as I'm closing out. One of my favorite stories. So Jerry Roberts was a young evangelist. I, I think, I think he was 17 years old when this happened. Maybe that's not true, but it was long about that era, somewhere during those years. Because at 16 years of age, he became a flaming evangelist, hitting the road, traveling, preaching the gospel. And then pastored stateside for 26 years, and then uh, for the better part of two decades was a missionary in Costa Rica. But as a young man, he needed to go preach on the other side of the state. I want to say it was New Mexico. I'm not even sure about that part. I'm, I'm not even sure about that part. I just know it was a long drive to get to the other side of the state, and he was going to preach at the church. He had just enough money to fill his tank with gas. And then he would get there, and they would give him a love offering, and he would be able to fill his car up with gas to go back home. But he goes and pours his heart into ministry in the little church. They didn't even say a word. The pastor never even mentioned it. They did not give him a love offering of any sort. And so here he is sitting on empty. He has a long drive to go back across the state. And just in faith, he just gets in the car and starts driving. Well, God, you knew this before me. You're going to take care of this some way, somehow. I don't know if you're going to get me there operating on fumes, but somehow I'm going to make it home. And he gets out on the highway and, and he ran out of gas out on the side of the highway. And so now it's dark. He pulls over on the side there and he gets out of the car and he takes his Bible, turns the headlamps on in the car. And he goes and sits in front of the car and just opens up his Bible. He's just reading his Bible. When a big gas tanker pulls up, what are you doing, young man? Well, I was over here in this town preaching and I've, I've run out of gas. And the, the driver says, well, in these big old tankers, you know, usually, I, I just emptied it up. I just filled up a, a gas station back there. But usually there's a few gallons sloshing around back there. Why, why don't we, we'll figure out if we can get you some gallons. And, and he pulled the big old hose off the truck. I don't know if they had a funnel. I'm not sure how they figured it out. But he filled his tank up with gas. Started her up. And drove on his way. And that was just, that was one story. Hey, we could tell you dozens and dozens and dozens of stories. Some of you are on empty today. You're just on empty. You don't know how you're going to make it. You got nothing left in the tank. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to have a formula. All you need to do is simply say, Lord, here I am. All you do is wait. All you do is just keep standing. All you do is pray. He will fill you up with living water. First, I want to ask, who are the ones who would like to be saved today? If you need to be rescued, Jesus is your rescue. In fact, I want to pray an example of one way that you could pray. These are not magic words. But if you want to be rescued, 
pray these words along with me right now. You don't even have to necessarily say it out loud, but if you really, if you say this in your heart, if you really, if you pray this, and at the end of it, I'm just going to say amen. And if you agree with me, just say amen. Hey, if you don't agree with me, don't say amen. But if you agree with me, and if you want to ask Jesus to be your Savior, then say amen. But you should pray something like this, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I've lost my way. It's never as if I intended to drift. I just sort of, uh, I drifted. I don't know, Lord, somehow life got complicated. All kinds of things happened. There's a long story. I'll have to tell you about it later, Lord. But, but right now, I'm sitting on empty. I would appreciate it if you would fill my tank. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, Jesus. I believe that you rose from the dead and conquered the grave, Jesus. I believe that you will come again someday, Jesus. There's many questions I have. There's many things I don't know, but I do confess that. I do believe that. And I give you my heart today. Please, living water, please come live inside of me right now. Save me. I ask these things, in fact, in your name, by your authority, your authority the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So that's first. And then second, I want to pray for people who love Jesus with all your heart. But do you know what? You can get filled up with Jesus' presence and then it is surprising how quickly we leak. And we need to get refreshed again. And if you're sitting on empty today, if you're sitting on empty, just invite him to come in and bring refreshing to your soul. The way we're going to do that, um, I, I want to invite you to stand to your feet. Hey, listen, if you were one of, the, one of that first group, that is, you got saved today or you gave your life back to Jesus today, please come talk to me. If you can't talk to me, find somebody that looks like a leader. It's important to tell that to someone. Maybe you even need to be one of the ones baptized next Sunday. That would be awesome. That would be so awesome. Just come talk to me. But for this second part, the way we're going to respond is that Pastor Mo is going to lead us in some songs of worship. And we're going to respond. And in doing so, dip the deep water. Amen. Let the bucket go down deep. Pull up the clean, fresh, living water. God wants to meet you at the point of your need. Pastor, just lead us. You, you'll close it out however God puts it on your heart. Let's just, before we go home, let's worship. Lord, I'm amazed, I'm amazed at you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you.
more time how wide how wide how deep Lord how deep how great how great is your love for me oh how wide Father, we are swimming deep today in the grace and in the mercy that you provide. Lord, truly, it is a miracle. It is a miracle that we can say you would love someone like me. But you do because your love is perfect. And your word says that perfect love it drives out fear. So today we don't have to approach you with fear, but Lord, we can approach you in faith. And we know, Lord, that you meet us today. And for that, Lord, we say we're grateful. Amen and amen. God bless you today. Amen. God bless you as you leave this place. We're going to sing it one more time, but God bless you and go with God. Amen. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed.